What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is a little bit different. We're doing a cinematography breakdown for a music video that I shot and directed. This video um, is for my band called Earth Groans. I play guitar in that band. Let's jump right into the treatment. This is the treatment that I submitted to Solid State. And if you don't know what a treatment is, it's kind of just like an overall idea for the imagery and the story of a music video. Um, so the song's titled Avarice and Earth Groans right there. You can see there's like this homeless guy here. I love that image. That was kind of like the first image that inspired the look of this video for me. Um, so then, yeah, I just have like little clips of story idea here and I bolded like the most important parts. So if someone just wants to scan through it, it's pretty easy. So yeah, there's different images in here. This was like kind of an idea for location, like a parking garage, something like city looking and kind of dark. Um, there's some like old school black and white photos here. This tin cup of a, with a homeless guy's hand. Love that image as well. Um, yeah, there's just, so these are just kind of like the images that inspired the overall visuals of the video. And, and then I have like a list of props here at the end. So that's just kind of a treatment. If you're watching this and you're a filmmaker and you want to do music videos, um, I just made these like images in Photoshop. So they're just like, they're just separate little images with text boxes and you can just kind of like scroll through it. Just like really simple. Okay, cool. So let's jump into the actual video. Okay. And if you haven't watched this video yet, go ahead and watch it because I'm not going to have the audio playing because that would be obnoxious as heck. So... The actor in this video is actually my dad. This is my poppy, good old Michael Mayfield. He's a good man, good actor. Look at that grit. Look at this like this facial hair over here. That's good stuff. So the video opens with a couple of like tight shots of me and Caden jamming, and then it immediately cuts into this shot of my dad. So my goal here with the whole like first half of the video was to not show the homeless man's face. And um, this story is a story about a rich man and a poor man and kind of a conflict between them. It's kind of a story of greed. The cuts are very fast in this video. You can see he's holding the tin cup there. So yeah, see here, we're just, I'm trying to use these lines to, to block the rest of his face. I wanted to show as much expression as I could in his eyes without giving away his entire face. And there's a reason for that. We've got these nice like leading lines here, which is really cool. And then you see, this is the first time we see our rich man come into, into the scene. Um, so the rich man is also my dad. So I, there's a line in the song um, that repeats, it says, you look a lot like me. And it's comparing like um, a rich man to a poor man and how they're both human and that like greed or money should not separate people into classes of like love or value. Um, so I really loved that theme in the lyrics that Jeremy wrote and wanted to run with that. So when he said, you look a lot like me, I was like, man, what if we had the homeless man and the rich man be the actual like same person, but not really reveal it right away. So maybe people catch it right away. Maybe they don't, but you can see right here, he looks down I, lo oh, I love that shot so much. So the rich man looks down at the poor man and the poor, the poor man's looking in front, looking back at him. And there's this shadow that walks by to, to signify that he's walking past him. But this shadow is actually uh, my mom's shadow. And I just tried to color everything similarly so it looks like he's walking by him. And then he looks away, kind of shows rejection. And then you just kind of see it in the homeless man's face right here. And then he's going into, I want to kind of imagine him as a lawyer. And he's, and we shot this right outside of a law office in Norfolk, Nebraska, which is my hometown. Yeah, baby. Um, and then the band footage was actually shot in Omaha. Straighten your, <laughs> straighten your shirt there, Schaefer. He's got a little hair or something right there. But um, so yeah, this, all the band footage was shot in Omaha under a bridge. Um, gorilla style. We just like came in, shot really fast and left. And um, so 
all the shots of me were filmed by my good friend, Peter Barnes. He's a awesome photographer and uh, videographer living in Lincoln. So he met us there and we shot really quick, hung out and got out of there. So I tried to silhouette with the exposure. I tried to silhouette, um, the actor as much as I could to not reveal his identity. So I like kind of let these flares like sneak in, which I love. I love that. Like kind of like I warmed that up just a little bit, tried to keep this nice and blue. So I try to keep everything really tight and aggressive because it's a very aggressive song. So all the shots are very tight. It's a very aggressive song. And I mean, most of our music is just really aggressive. So I wanted the camera to like mimic that, but I didn't want it to make people feel sick. So I shot at a high shutter speed so like the lines are a little bit sharper not as much motion blur so I shot this all at, everything was shot at 4k at 60 frames per second at a shutter angle of 180 degrees so that's like 1 1 20th of a shutter so just a little bit fast which is keeps everything sharp for the most part so let's go back to this first shot here I want to talk a little bit about the color grading process and inspiration um, I've been like super obsessed with Better Call Saul lately, just finished season three and it was glorious. So I really was looking at the saturation of this image as well as the sky. So their sky is like super, super blur or super, super, <laughs> their sky is super blue. Um, and I'm guessing they were able to like individually mask that off and really like focus on the sky, which I don't do in Premiere just for time's sake. Um, so yeah, there's a super blue, but I actually like this a little better. I like a little bit more subtle and just kind of like softer blues here. Um, so yeah, everything you can still see, there's detail here in the cloud. Um, there's detail back here as well. I'm guessing they're shooting like red raw or something. So it's probably not an issue for them. But even like in the reds here, I really like the reds. I think those are actually a little more saturated. And you can tell, eh, it looks pretty close. Um, but I directly looked at the skin tones of this image on Mike's face here. There's some like harsh looking sun coming down on him, kind of shadowing the right side of his face. And it's kind of similarly here, the sun's coming directly down on my dad's head. They kind of like look like similar um, in this image. So yeah, I tried to basically make the skin as close as I could. So I like cropped out the whole image minus his face and with a vector scope, just tried to match the saturation and, and color of their faces their skin tones and their image right here is definitely a little more um, black which looks really good mine's not um, totally crushed in the blacks but I wanted to get it close without it looking over contrasty so this was like the main um, image I used for the inspiration behind this grade so towards the end here there's some black and white images in our video and I did my best also to kind of just like go for this look because it's just so clean and really smooth and soft and I wanted to do that as well so you can just see their highlights are nice and soft back here and I tried to mimic that in these images as well and the blacks are nice and dark which looks similar up here which is awesome so thanks Better Call Saul Colorist for inspiring this video so let's talk about the most tricky part of this video, the most difficult. So there's a scene in this video where the, the homeless man and the rich man finally interact. And obviously it was the same actor for both roles, so that was the most challenging thing. So I used Jeremy here as a stand-in for the opposing character. So like right here, we see the rich man, he's looking down at the poor man, he's finally gonna stop. He puts his shoe on his little like um, block to shine his shoes because the homeless man buys a shoe shining kit to try to raise money. And um, so he's looking down at the homeless man here and I, I just love this image of like this towering image of my dad just looking like super aggressive. He did a really good job. Dad, I don't know if you're watching this, but you killed it, man. This is actually Jeremy's leg in my dad's shoe and pants. And this is my dad washing, shining his shoes. So I try to keep it as consistent as possible. So he's shining the shoes there. Just lots of, just lots of shining going on to fill those gaps. <laughs> There's another shot of my dad. Love that. And my dad's grabbing the money there. So this is my dad. So I tried to keep everything tight so it wouldn't look like, okay, you're obviously switching actors. Like I just wanted it to be very close up for these shots. Then you finally see, this is the first shot where we finally see 
the poor man's face. And so my dad had his scruff all grown out for this. And we shot this the day before we shot the stuff of my dad as the rich man. So he could shave right after we shot this stuff. I love that. I love that scene where they first interact. They see each other, looks at him. Oh, it's so cool. And then, so for these scenes, we shot these at 120. Sadly, my camera only does 1080 at 120, but we just did like these long holdouts of the final note, the final chord before the big breakdown. And we just had someone on a ladder tossing down money. These are actually like movie bills. So like the president's face on him actually looks super goofy. He's like, <laughs> he's like making a little kissy face. But so those are film dollars, which is nice. I love that shot of that one just drifting over Caden and he doesn't even flinch. What a tough guy. And then it goes into the breakdown, cuts to black really quick. Bam. So I wanted this part, the big breakdown to be kind of like suck the actors into this like different world, which is why I put it in black and white. I just wanted it to be separated from everything else. And so the homeless man here, the poor man, I keep calling him homeless, but I guess he is. Um, so the poor man, he just, I just was trying to direct my dad and just tell, I just told him like, let's just try to express like, you're the, the poor man, but you feel compassion and almost like pity for the rich man because of how stuck in his greed that he is. And then the rich man's face is just kind of like stern and like no compassion because he's, a, he's just, he's engulfed by greed. You can see that the money's falling down in slow motion here and just kind of signifying greed and obsession with money and this like line of tear in my dad's eyes that's like Denzel Washington baby just good acting good work dad the breakdown we we play it backwards the second time which is super fun and so I reversed these clips and the money is flying upwards you can tell this was okay this was the most tricky part so poor man rich man facing each other so what I did was I put the, tri the camera on a tripod, locked it off, and we shot. So this was the second day of the story of the narrative shooting. So my dad, the poor man here, does not have facial hair. And it was the one like thing that we just couldn't get around that. And I knew that going into it, like there's going to be one scene that was um, just barely um, not consistent, and that would be the facial hair. But if we wanted to pull this scene off, that's how we had to do it. Um, so the clips are really short. People may, might notice, might not. Either way, I think the story comes across clear and it looks cool. So I wanted this shot of the poor man and the rich man facing each other. I wanted there to be one scene that's like, whoa, dude, like they're, they're actually standing there together. So we shot this, or we shot the rich man first. So the camera's on a tripod. I had my dad stand here and I checked where he was on the, on the grid as far as this line here. And then I left the camera where it was and then we put him over here and recorded a separate clip. And then there's actually a line right in this area. And it's, I masked it together and feathered it out so that it's like that line is spread apart and it's really like blurred out. So you, honestly, I can't even tell. So yeah, that was just kind of the one sacrifice we had to make in order to pull this shot off. But the money's flying up and they're looking at each other. He has compassion. He's looking stern and stuck. And that's just kind of like the final bang. And then actually the final bang is this grave digger driving in this, this stake, which turned out so cool. So we shot this scene in South Dakota um, at Jeremy's parents' farm on their land. And so we had a grave digger hitting this sign in. And you can see right here, it says, here lies a poor man. And Jeremy, the master craftsman, built this grave so this is actually just a big sheet of plywood and a top layer of fake money bills. So they're like money stacks, but there's only a bill on the very top. So there's just like paper underneath, so it looks thick. So we put this on the ground. It was raining, so this was really hard to shoot. You can see there's water spots on the lens, but it actually looks cool. And then we he bought a bunch of topsoil, and we just made like a layer of topsoil around the sheet of plywood. That way it kind of looks like a freshly dug grave. Ding. Oh, that water dropping is so cool. So I just wanted to show off the grave a little bit, just how good of a job Jeremy did. You can see right here, like there's like, you can see the paper with the soil. And then I like this like 
grass in the foreground and, and the line of focus is so thin it's like blur here focus here out of focus again there it's just cream so cool so this is just the final scene and then it says here lies a poor man so this is the rich man's grave the rich man from the story this is his grave basically he died in his his greed and his obsession with money which is why he's his grave is covered in dollar bills um and that was just kind of like the final like boom moment of the story where like you choose how you live and you choose you choose what your what your god is essentially and his god was money and i mean that's dangerous that's a dangerous place to be but it's a lot it's a lot of us struggle with that it's it's easy to worry about money and be, become obsessed i'm a, i'm a victim of worrying about money money like the love of money is dangerous uh, and it ends with that shot of Jeremy. It kind of reminds me of the beginning of the estate music video where the camera whips in on him in the very beginning. This one, it whips out at the very end. And that was just like a camera move. I don't even know if I did that on purpose, but I was like, oh, I have to end on that shot. It was all shot with intention. The I had a shot list of every single shot for every single scene. And of course, like there's going to be scenes where you improvise, you're shooting, and come up with something on the spot like oh what if we did this like added this little scene or this little shot and and that just that's so fun to do thanks for watching this this is like super fun i love breaking down like how i shot things and graded things and directed things and if you guys are interested in more stuff like this let me know um, i can do breakdowns of all the music videos i do or whatever and subscribe i do like three videos a week and it's really fun to do i have a podcast called the rice fire podcast that i do with my sister and it's super chill and goofy and you might like it so check those things out hit me up with a little comment and i'll see you guys in the next video